So this is the data I took when I looked at a filament lamp. We've got these values for voltage or potential difference and these currents as well. So what I'm going to do is plot this on a graph where we have current on the y-axis, voltage on the x-axis, and we're going to have both positive and negative values for both. So here we have current and voltage, and what we can now start to do is plot some of the values. So we've got 9.87 and 1.94. So 9.87 is about here, and it's 1.94 which is there, and now I'm just going to plot the rest of this data. And we've got the origin here, because when there's no voltage, there's going to be no current. And then we've got the negative values as well. OK, so that's the data plotted. Again, we can see that maybe if we put our ruler here, we can't really draw a straight line of best fit. So that means we're going to have to have a curved line of best fit. Uh, and it's going to be kind of going here and around here. So if I just um, draw that like so, and again, this is why I've used a, a pencil in case I make any mistakes. So that's one side. I'm going to flip the paper around to do something similar with this data over here. OK, so that is my line of best fit for a filament lamp. And what we can see is that we don't have a straight line, and that means we don't have a constant resistance. In actual fact, when we've got a higher voltage, we've got a greater current, and that means there's a greater heating effect, which actually increases its resistance as we have higher values over here. And the other thing that you might notice already from the data here is that the positive and negative values are the same, just these ones are negative. And that means it doesn't weigh, matter which way the current is going through this, it's going to behave in exactly the same way if it's either positive or negative. So this S shape curved here is the kind of thing that you'd expect to see for a filament lamp.